Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's episode is going to be a very different format to our typical format. Today we are going to discuss metal magic, but this is a subject that I know next to nothing about. So I've got an expert in the subject. His name is Sam Thompson, and he's a blacksmith and an author. Um, he's a metal magician. He's a priest of the Morrigan. He's a combat veteran and a lovely, lovely man. He was gracious enough to grant an interview and share some of his experience and his wisdom. And I apologize in advance for the scattershot nature of this interview. I was so taken with this subject that I couldn't help but jump from topic to topic. And metal magic is not as well known in witchcraft circles as maybe something like crystal magic or elemental magic, but it is no less powerful. And we truly do ourselves a disservice to not take advantage of the power and the personalities of metals that are all around us, from the brass pendulum to the pewter ritual chalice to the cast iron cauldron. There are so many ways that we can and do use metals in our craft, and this episode is meant to just give a little insight, a little information, maybe whet the appetite for more, and I am so excited to share this episode with you. I'm going to be straight with you. You're my first interview, so this is like a little bit of a learning curve. (laughs) So I've got to know because I haven't quite got there yet. You keep um, like dropping little breadcrumbs about um, the Morrigan and and working with the Morrigan. And I have to know, how did that happen? She's such a powerhouse, such an intimidating figure. And I mean, I I know, okay, I'm not a priest of the Morrigan. So I'm, I definitely have a different relationship with her than, than you would, but um, how did this, how did this evolve? Uh, my work with the Morgan was just wasn't anything to do with me. Um, I mean, uh, she she chose me, um, and it was not something that um, I mean. I don't know. I've I've been in and out of groups for a while, and I'm not sure there there's a handful of people that maybe have gone out in search of her. Mm-hmm. You know, she seems to um, draw those to her that you know will best suit her. I'm gonna put it into instance writing the book. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's probably something I haven't really talked about a whole lot. Um, I, I did not want to write the book. I, I don't want to write, never wanted to write a book. I, I don't even speak English. So <laughs> trying to learn how to write in a language that I don't speak was was challenging. Because mm-hmm. right? we don't write how we talk. No. It, it is a completely different language. And me putting it together from it starting one way and pivoting as I was writing it some way else. I had there was a lot of people that helped me pull this thing off. Um, you know, it was definitely it wasn't wasn't just me. You know, I had a lot of people that helped with thought and design and editing and all this that, you know, Formatting. I just kept getting told over and over, you know, you just do what you need to do and all that other stuff will be taken care of. You know, so a lot of it was just, you know, just doing what I'm told. Does and that was that, sense? is that difficult for you? I mean, I, you know, we all have different personalities, but it was it difficult to first of all, ask for help and then accept help yes. in something like that. Is that something that you felt like, oh, I should, I should just do everything myself. Was that part of the battle? Not just the, not just the well, writing of the book, but also trusting people and collaborating and maybe delegating. I, I think with, with most lessons learned in life, it's always a yes. And, mm-hmm. you know, yes, mm-hmm. I learned this. And I also learned all these other things too. Sure. You know, you know, it's like, you don't set a goal to achieve the goal. You set the goal for, what it makes you become by achieving the goal, right? Um, well put. You know, hopefully it makes you grow enough to where, you know, you, you, you've earned it. Um, but yes, to- totally, because I'm I'm so much used to doing everything on my own, mm-hmm. right? I think it's kind of all encompassing. I'm a little bit of a control freak, right? Because I like to make sure if it's if it's wrong, it won't, I want it to be my fault, right. right? You know, so I don't mind bearing that responsibility for my work. Um, but it is hard because there was so much of it that I was that was foreign to me and to put that trust into others what was a challenge you know mm-hmm. um, but on the flip side learning that I need to need to do that you know that there's a time to do that and it's okay and um people people are oh you know they're good they're <laughs> 
people people are good you know they'll help well, you right. out when you need it and that is hard <laughs> you know it's anytime we try to find you know a tribe or a coven of people um that's that's part of the of the process is is finding people whose vision aligns with our own and then allowing us to all kind of co-create something really great together. But I do yeah. want to go back a little bit. I think I, I skipped ahead. Um, this is just going to be what it is. Um, so what came first for you? The, the, were you a blacksmith before you started delving into the magical aspect of it oh, or yeah. was that something you were already doing yeah um i started blacksmithing um probably you know 10 11 years ago maybe or more roughly. okay um way way before even my involvement with the morgan you know um, so what was it then that that um that sort of triggered it for you what what was it that made you start to see the magic in the metal you know, I'm kind of slow, you know, so I'm a little hard headed. Sometimes I need, I need a couple of different lessons, <laughs> you know, how about now? Do you understand it now? I, got, um, I, got, I, got. <laughs> yeah. I know so what that's I, about. <laughs> you know, so a, a lot of it was um, just working with the metal, you mm -hmm. know, and being open. I'm, 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 I am an animist, you know, so I do believe that everything has a consciousness about it. And I'd never really thought of metal in that light, right? I never yeah. really thought of wow, I have an intimate connection to this, right? Um, steel is 98% iron. Um, there are very few humans, maybe none that I know of that can survive without iron. Right. That we was... already have an intimate connect and connection to the material. So it's not like, you know, something that's foreign. It's actually literally right. a part it's of A building block of life in a very literal sense for sure. Exactly. And that was one of the things that stood out. And that kind of, that's something that you present very early in the book is that we are full of metals, iron and copper and zinc. And I, I had never put that together and I've done a lot of episodes, you know, I've probably done almost a hundred episodes and we talk about crystals and herbs and different kinds of woods and all kinds of stones, all these things that we don't think of as, you know, I, they're they're just natural elements, and but metal to me always seemed like such a different, like an outlier. We, I almost thought of it as like man made, but it's just not. It just isn't. No, it no. grows in the earth, yeah. <laughs> in in a sense, and it grows in human beings and in our animals and in our you know, it's everywhere. And so when I when I when you point that out in the book, that was. I felt like a dim bulb. I really, that was such an aha moment. And then as you kind of go in and start talking about the different ages, you know, the bronze age and the brass age and copper and brass age, I guess that's not a thing, but they got brass got robbed. <laughs> it did. It got the short end of the brass stick, but copper and iron and steel. And I was just thinking about, you know, that's one of the action um, exercises at, at the end of one of the sections, which I loved. Um, and I, I started looking around at all these things that, that I hold very dear that I think of as very magical. My cauldron, cast iron. I have this, you know, my athame is cast iron. My I have an, a charging plate that's made of copper. I have, I have this little acorn necklace that's made of brass. And it didn't occur to me that that the metal itself was part of what ma makes it so precious to me. It's what makes me connect in, in such a, a personal way, but that's what they're made of. What else could it be that makes those, you know, that, that makes me feel that connection. It's the metal itself. And so, like I said, that was, that was such a light bulb moment when you pointed that out in the book. And I really thought I've got to spend more time with all of these tools that I use that I just hadn't really given the proper respect to. Well, I mean, it's one of those things that you, you don't know, you don't know. You know but, I, I didn't know. It's like, I, no, I, got, I went into this, you know, being all Albert Einstein with the thing, you know, a lot of this is just, you know, trial and error. Mm -hmm. You know, I know because I know now, you, yeah. you know, but <laughs> sure. it, you know, and that's why, you know, I only speak to what I do know. Um, you know, I get people ask me questions all the time about different metals and all that kind of stuff. And I, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's just not something that I that I work with, you know. I mean, I can you know make something up that sounds really good, 
Um, but it's just not, you know, um, I, I think you need to work with what you know. Right. And, you know, this to me, I think is so, I don't want to say new because it's not new. It's, it's a re-remembering and a reconnection. It's not anything that got lost. We didn't lose it. We just didn't see it. Yeah. You know, because the Industrial Revolution came along, and it was just like, you know, we just, metal wasn't, it. there was so much of it, it, we didn't see it, right? You yeah. Know, it's like, re rearrange a room in your house, and all of a sudden, you saw this new cool stuff you didn't even know you had. You know, <laughs> but it's been laying right out there in the open all this time. Just right. Just a different perspective of it, right? <laughs> you know. Right. And that's like, that's exactly what I was trying to convey, maybe not quite as eloquently, is that once I realized what it was about these tools that I use. I have a pair of um, scissors. They're made of cast iron that I use strictly for nothing else but ritual cord cuttings. Why did I decide those were the scissors that I needed to use for that? I don't know. They decided, apparently. It wasn't me. I saw them and I was like, oh, that's what those are for. It it really is. It, <laughs> <laughs> it really is. God, it's, it's, it's a personal relationship. And I just feel like, um, uh, I, I think that it's, it's just something that maybe we, we haven't finished discovering and we don't, um, we don't know enough about, and maybe we did, maybe it's still there in like the collective conscious. And that's kind of what we're, you know, what you're exploring and what you're kind of helping people to get back to. Um, what's your favorite for people, um, who maybe have never worked with metal, just something that's not maybe simple, but just something that anybody could at least give a shot. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, I I am not a proponent, a proponent of you have to be a blacksmith in order to do metal magic. Mm -hmm. Metal magic is universal, right? It's There's some form of metal magic because when I was doing the research for the book, that's what I was looking for. Um, I'm not an expert on any, on, on any of these, right? Mm -hmm. So... You know, I'm just, <laughs> I don't even play a doctor on TV, right? Sure. So, <laughs> um, but the, the common thread that they had, no matter where we are globally, is there was some form of metal magic involved. You know, you had magical metal of some sort in mm -hmm. every history, you know, you know, whether it was the Egyptians or the Africans or the Asians or, you know, the Norse, even North America had metal working, right? Mm -hmm. uh, long before the Copper Age, they've come to find it. Anyway, but I think that the thing that connects everything is that metal connects everything, right? To go to your point, you know, where I live, I live in the foothills of North Carolina, and we have a very iron-rich soil. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just part of the ground, you know, so I do have a connection to it just naturally because that's where I grew up. Surrounded by it. Yeah, yeah. you know, to where people in the other, you know, depending on where you live, you know, and I, I think... The thing that's so unique about it is once I did start building that relationship with the tools, the way that the work changed because it became more, that piece of metal became more, yeah. so it became more, right? So mm -hmm. it became not just something that I take out for high tea, you know, the eight holidays. Yeah. You know, it became uh, a working co-creator. Co you know, a, a, an active participant, you know, in my work, it was an ally. What was, the, what was something that surprised you when you started to cross that bridge and, and make that transition from working with it just as, as a blacksmith to working with it as a magician? Mm -hmm. The biggest thing that surprised me was I didn't, I, I didn't notice it before. You know, that still kind of gets me from time to time. It's like, I just, you know, it, you, you, you learn to do a thing and, and you start doing a thing and then you don't really understand how you do it, which I mm -hmm. think is probably one of the big reasons for the book. Yeah, yeah, right. So I would kind of, I had to cat, you know, categorize everything. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest thing that surprised me what was the reality of it, you know, that it wasn't in, in, in my world, in my experience, mm -hmm. you know, um, metal magic has changed my life because it has changed the way I approach my magical life. You know, so by altering that, everything else is altered because I, my world has been changed mm -hmm. by metal because I see things now that I never saw before. You know, uh, your key, you know, you had mentioned earlier what something simple people could do, right? You have a key that you use to lock your home up with. Mm -hmm. You've got two separate pieces of metal that come together as one that now lock and activate your wards in your residence. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right. So you Absolutely. can look at the key is almost like a magic wand in that point, right? Except now mm -hmm. it's metal, right? And that is how you're activating your ward. So it's not just a me lock and go. It's, you know, I'm, you know, putting up the drawbridge and I'm, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> putting the shut up. Literally and my... symbolically. Yeah. Exactly. Closing Literally. it, shutting it down. And then all my wards are metal. Go, you know, so they're all connected. Mm -hmm. right? So a, a lot of times when I do a lot of that work, I make sure that the metal I work with is all connected to one another. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'll cut a large working out of the same piece of metal. So it's, it, it all remains intact. Oh, that's yeah. clever. So, oh. Yeah. So even though they're separate, they're still connected. They're still a team. Exactly. Put it in a. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you would think of as twins, right? Yeah. You know, it's the same, same stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just separate. <laughs> Anyway. Ooh, okay that's so, interesting so when i lock my home when i activate those wards all of that is connected so i activate one ward and they're all connected together so it's mm. just very but very very i also have access to be able to do all this stuff too i also know sure. but there's no reason why you can't do the same thing with yourself right mm -hmm. so you can take you know, we just talked about a key there's i mean there's so much metal that we don't even know we see it anymore a washer Right. You just a simple washer you get at the home box store. Mm -hmm. You know, those are great protection. You know, you can use them or write symbols on them and hang them, you know, from a tree or something around the outside to actually put your wars there. Oh, yeah. Air, you know, <laughs> so, ah, yeah. You know, well, and I also, even the shape of them, you know, the shape being a circle is, is also just very powerful. And, and yep. I don't know, I'll just all of that. Oh, that's interesting. That's, I like that. Yeah, welcome to my world. Ah, I no. love them when things come together, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what, uh, what can you tell us? What can you tell me about, um, just some of the, the properties of a metal, like, like iron specifically, because okay. I know that that's one that I, it's a metal that I use and I couldn't even tell you why, but I've got, I've got a railroad spike at the four corners of my property and it, things like that, you know, and I don't even know why that's the one that I use. I just know that I do. Um, so what is it? What tell us about, we'll start with iron. Okay. Um, so we, if we look at iron, I always think of iron as being laser like focus, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's got one job. Right. A nail can only be a nail. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I got one thing to do. Um, but there's also a, a huge amount of strength with iron. Right. Because if you look at those pictures back from the uh, 1940s, 30s, 40s, 50s, skyscrapers, mm. but they make these metal skeleton that they then wrap the building. So the, the metal is actually the bones of the building. So it's actually oh, yeah, the, like the, um, the eye bars the or whatever they're called. Yeah. Those yeah. eye beams or whatever. They, yeah. Beams, yeah. They, you know, they riveted all that stuff together. Right. So it's, you know, those are the bones of the building. That's the strength, right. The focus, mm -hmm. of, you know, so iron is that strength It's courage. I think, um, you know, there's some, a lot of, there's longevity, but it's, you have to take care of it. Right. So it's a recip re reciprocity, whatever uh, that word. Sure. Yeah. Right. Because it, <laughs> um, uh, because you got the that's corrosion I get tribute from. Um, in the book, I speak of, you know, you need, as you work with your, with your items, you need to offer tribute. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that, it's not the mocking Jay tribute, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's taking care of the metal, it's just taking time to spend time. Mm -hmm. with the metal when we're you know if it needs to be shined shine it if it needs to be a coat of oil put a coat of oil on it you know it's about building that relationship of you know it should it's transactional it should be, well it should be more than that mm -hmm. right you know so but but if you're having something do something for you um it's only good manners to, to return a favor to service <laughs> yeah like an act of yeah. service for the for the metal itself okay that makes so it's sense. Just spending time with it going you know hey thank you for your work yada yada, yada whatever mm -hmm. you know do it for the sake of doing it because it's the right thing to do very nice and that especially with iron because it is you know anytime you use a cast iron pan or something you've got to you could boil it down and just make sure that the, the corrosion and all of that mm -hmm. so, so that so that it can continue to be this 
reliable tool for you to use day upon day. And even generationally, if you've got a, if you've got a cast iron pan handed down from your grandma, that's, that's a treasure. I bet you do. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have a, once again, I'm, you know, I'm Appalachian. So, you know, it's, Ah. it's, that's the way everybody cooks with this. So. <laughs> um, what about copper? What can you tell us about uh, the, the properties of copper? My experience with copper um, is has a gentle wisdom to it, mm. you know, which kind of grandparents, you, you know, that just it's just you know they have the stories to tell. Co- copper is one is a unique metal because it is the only one that is a that to my knowledge. Okay. Um, it's only one that's 100% recyclable. So you don't lose anything There's no in the waste. recycling oh. process. There's no oh. waste with it. Um, so I always kind of thought, when you look at metal, if you look at what it does mon- mundanely, it will mm-hmm. give you a really good hint of what you can use it magically because there's really not a difference. <laughs> you know, oh, it doesn't that's... have a mundane life and a magic life. It just has a life. Right. That makes sense because as I, I think I mentioned, I have a, a copper charging plate and I don't, you know, I don't know much about metal. I went to school, but I only remembered what I had to, uh, but I did remember that copper is very conductive. So, yes. um, so I've, I've got this charging plate and it just makes sense. It's just in kind of intuitively, um, that, you know, if I'm, I, I'll put my, you know, my obsidian ring in it to recharge it. If I feel like, you know, my, my amulets are are feeling a little sluggish, a little depleted. I just leave them in there for a few days and then I pull them out and it's like, they're so zesty again. If you look at, you know, India, you know, their thought is, you know, copper to them is very healing. So a lot of their mm-hmm. cookware, a lot of stuff that they wear, they wear a lot of copper because they look at it as being a healing metal. And then let's, let's, I want to talk about brass a little bit because I do I feel brass. like it. I love brass. Brass got robbed so bad. I, to me, I look at I look at brass like my favorite uncle. So <laughs> I do. It, it's just kind of utilitarian. My uncle was like was a, was in the construction. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just very you know down to earth. You know, just work kind of thing, right? Um, so I kind of look at that as brass. Brass just being uh, very utilitarian. It um, is, but it's it's very resonant too. Though I've got I have a brass singing bowl yep. um, that I really love. That's and it just the the tone that it gives is just so clear and so gorgeous and i look at brass as being very much glamoury because Mm. it blends into war no matter what it is it'll blend into any environment so yeah i I should have paid more attention in physics a lot of this stuff you know it's like i've it it has taken me on a journey itself Mm -hmm. i think that's one of the things that i like about the book the, the way i wrote it was it, that it does have a lot of there's a lot of work involved in it mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of, it's a workbook it's not just it a, a read and all of a sudden you've got fairy dust and now you know all there is to know about metal mm-hmm. so it's about self-discovery you know because you're going through a process building your own foundation to actually work on your own magical practice of metal magic is kind of what how i look at the book you know so you have a really good solid foundation if you do all the action steps Mm-hmm. The book that when you get done that you have enough knowledge comfortably to actually be able to begin your own practice on this. that's my that is that well it and it, it absolutely comes through because it definitely feels very interactive it doesn't feel this is not a passive book at all this is this is a book that requires your you know the reader's own action and um involvement and i do i do like uh that kind of a hands on approach i i i don't learn well um just being told something i learned you know i learn personally i learn best when i do something with my own two hands it makes it a lot if i'm going to learn it at all i've got to learn it by doing it that's the only way that it that i can connect with it and that's something that i really have appreciated so far in this book is that is that the reader is responsible for this knowledge you've given it and now you've given the reader an assignment to go along with it so that they can begin to understand it um, in such a hands-on way that this isn't this isn't like you know observing a lecture or something this is this is like a workshop which I'll take that <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Well, that's how it feels. That's how it feels. And I'm, I'm, I really do, as I said, I appreciate that so much because that speaks to my own learning style. 
what what is your favorite tool to make? Ooh. <laughs> oh, this is not sexy at all. Um, <laughs> it's, it's my my divination dice. Oh, it's okay. My favorite tool. Um, it's the dice on top on the front of the book. Mm -hmm. you the page cover of the book. It's got the little dice. And they're my divination dice. Um, I use them all the time because it helps me make sure my ego is not in the way of what mm. I'm saying. You know, as I use that as a system of checks and balances, you know, um, am I understanding this correctly? Mm -hmm. You know, do you have anything else to say? You know, do I need to pull from a different source, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever. So I use it as a basically a, a waypoints. So I make sure that I don't slide myself, you know, into what I want from the reading, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that, know, is the, that is the that is the tricky part. Going, hmm, you know, this can go either way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so uh, I, I use it as a, like I said, keep my e ego in check. What uh what metal did you use for those dice? Steel. Steel, okay. Steel is one of those metals that um throughout the ages has been used to bear witness. Mm -hmm. Um, you think of swearing on a sword, right? Because yeah. you're oath bound to a piece of metal because it's bearing witness to your oath and your actions. Um, that's why you really took extra good care of your one more reason why you took good care of your sword because it protect you, mm -hmm. you know, and you didn't want it to fail you when you needed it the most. So it was systems of checks and balances. That's why you steal because it, it's just the facts. You know, that's actually where the title of the book came from. Metal never lies. Right. Yes. That mm -hmm. that's so interesting. And that's one, one of the, we didn't talk about steel when we were talking about the different properties. Um, but cause well, it I, kind of fits in with iron because iron and steel to me, I use synonymously Mm -hmm. Because the only difference between steel and iron is about 2% carbon. Okay. And some other stuff. Like There's like 3,500 different grades of steel. But Oh, is that all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just to make it real simple for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. I use steel and iron synonymous. Just kind of interchangeably. Right, but it's basically, you know, you wouldn't have to cook steel much to have it go back to iron. Because you can cook everything out of it. <sighs> That's interesting. And, you know, I have to say, of, of the metals... And, you know, we didn't even talk about gold or silver. Um, although if you, you know, when, when, anytime you do hear anything about the magical properties of metals, it's almost always just gold or silver. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I guess I hadn't ever really considered steel to be a particularly, I don't want to be... No, I don't want to insult my steel. I don't want, I don't, yeah, I don't think of it as, as like a very magical metal. And I don't know why that might be. I don't know if it's because I think of it as like a more modern. It's too much of it. Metal. Maybe so. And that, cause when nope. I think of steel, I'm thinking like, you know, surgical tools right. and, you know, Pots and pans, uh, yeah, refrigerator. Just, yeah. Your car. Right. So I, I think of it as like, it's a very, You're surrounded you know, by it. you don't it's a workhorse. It. Yeah kind of a, a metal, but I do, I do like stainless steel. I have a lot of stainless steel jewelry in particular, just because I'm lazy and I don't have to polish it. Um, <laughs> but I hadn't ever really thought about it as bearing those same, um, traits that we would confer upon iron, like that strength and stability yeah. and that solid, um, the dependability. Yeah. I, I do. You know, like I said, to me, the, I use them kind of interchangeably. Mm -hmm. I know technically that's not right, but um, I mean, as a blacksmith, both of them work with steel of some form, not iron. Mm -hmm. um, just because iron's a lot more, I mean, it's a lot harder to work with than steel. But it's just that little bit, you'd be surprised. Um, but yeah, I've, I've always just kind of talked about them the same. Okay. Okay. That's very interesting. Um, I do need to hmm, shoot. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to close because, uh, I am running out of time, but I, I'm just, this is God, I could talk to you for like another five hours about all of this, because I just feel like there's so much to know. Um, but that's, you know, that's kind of, honestly, that's sort of like the purpose of my show. I, I never 
can get all the way to the bottom of a topic because there is no bottom to the rabbit hole. There's always so much more to know. Um, but if I can just give a little taste and kind of, you know, whet the appetite, and then if somebody's interested, if this is something that that somebody didn't even know that they needed to know about, that's right. that's where I that's where I like to help people make that connection. But I do want to know. So we we've, we've talked about your book a little bit. It's called Metal Never Lies, an introduction to metal magic. Um, and then where can people find you online? Um. I have my website, which is ravenskeepforge.com. Okay. Uh, Instagram, ravenskeepforge. Facebook, ravenskeepforge. Patreon, ravenskeepforge. YouTube. Excellent. It's all the same. Excellent. Yeah, okay. I like, <laughs> Just make it I like the continuity. It makes it simple. Okay. And I'm going to link to all of that in the episode description as well. Awesome. Um, so thank you very much for talking to me today. I am so excited to to get to the bottom of your book and to start putting a lot of this into action and i have set a commitment for myself i am just going to really get to know all of the tools that i use that are metal and i just i've got to give my cauldron here a lot more love than i have been um and i i appreciate you i appreciate you just you. bringing this to us and and really feeling filling a gap that that I, for one, didn't even realize needed filling. Hey, you know, up until about, you know, five years ago, I didn't need it. So, you know. Well, <laughs> but you're the guy, that. you're the guy. You were the one who needed to to bring the information to the people. And I appreciate you for, for answering that call. Thank you so much. I really, sure. really, this has been an absolute blast.